right. So we are going to. We talked yesterday about uh, finding the mean of a binomial distribution and finding the variance and standard deviation. Uh, so I'd like to go through a couple more examples today of that, uh, and then um, maybe if we have time, kind of demonstrate uh, what this information is really, what it means to us. Okay, so. Um, Okay, so a jar contains five red marbles, nine blue marbles, six green. Uh, it says you randomly select three marbles from the jar without replacement. Okay, if we go back up to um, the conditions required to be a binomial distribution, these four conditions right here. It says the experiment is repeated for a fixed number of times. So are we doing that a fixed number of times? Um, there you go. You randomly select three marbles from the jar without replacement, okay? Uh, the random variable represents the number of red marbles, okay? So you may be able to look at this and say, doing it three times. Maybe that's our, our fixed number of trials. Um, you can maybe think of, are there two um, outcomes, okay? Because I was talking about what is the number of red marbles you get. So your outcomes could be red marbles and then not red marbles, right? So you could have successes, you could have failures. Um, but where this kind of falls through and doesn't allow us to have a binomial distribution is the idea that each trial is independent of the other trials. Each trial is independent of the other trials, okay? If I keep the marble out, okay, does the first choice of a red marble or not a red marble impact the next one? Yeah, okay, so these, these events are not independent. Therefore, uh, the probabilities for each trial is changing, and that contradicts what requirements we need to be a binomial distribution. So this is not a binomial distribution. So we cannot um, use the mean formula, standard deviation formula, that kind of stuff for this, okay? And we would not use then eventually the probability formula that we're going to learn on Monday with this situation, okay? Um, we read the next one. It says you make a or take a multiple choice quiz that consists of 10 questions. Each question has four possible answers. Only one is correct. That wording there is kind of messed up, but um, it says to complete the quiz, you randomly guess the answers to each question. The random variable represents the number of correct answers. Okay, so the question is, is this um, a binomial distribution or not? Okay, so the question is, do we have, are we repeating this a certain number of trials? Okay, and the answer to that is yes. And again, hold on. So we do have a fixed number of trials. We're going to do this. 10 times, we've got 10 questions, right? Uh, guessing on each one of them. So uh, what is the probability that I get one, by just guessing, that I get w one question correct, or a particular question correct? One out of four, 0.25. Okay, so the probability of a success on one question or one in one, within one trial is 0.25. So then the probability of a failure, which we're calling Q, would be the complement of that, right? 0.75. Uh, so we got fixed number of trials. We got the idea that you know if I get question one right, that has no impact on question two being right or wrong. Has no impact on question three. And, and the idea is because I'm I'm just I'm guessing, right? Okay. This is like you've always heard, um, when in doubt, Charlie out, right? So somebody's gone through A, B, C, D, and they've just put C on all of them and trying to get as many points as they can. Heard that, right? Never heard that? When in doubt, Charlie out? No. Man, were you guys live in a cave? No. Okay. I mean, for the past five days, yeah. All right, so uh, we have independence. We have probabilities uh, staying the same for every trial. Um, and we got a fixed number of trials. So we have a binomial distribution here, right? Okay, we have two outcomes, um, a success and a failure. So now the question is, what is the mean? What is 
the variance, and then what is the standard deviation, okay? So the mean, remember that was n times p. So n times p. So n is 10, p is 0.25. So if I multiply those out, I get 2.5, okay? So what that means to me, if we were to do this, if, let's say that I gave every person in the school um, this quiz and they did this exact same thing, they just guessed all the way through, what we're saying is on average, they're gonna be, there's gonna be 2.5 correct answers on each, for each person, does that make sense? Some people might have three, some people have two, there might be a person that has seven, but then there's gonna be a person that might have one, does that make sense? That's all going to average out to, on average, per person, 2.5 uh, correct answers out of those 10. Okay? Now, if we want to find the standard deviation, we're going to take n times p times q, and this first is going to find the variance for us. So we already know n times p is 2.5, and we'll multiply that by q, which is 0.75. So when we do that, 2.5 times 0.75 gives us 1.875. That's my variance. So then remember the standard deviation is then the square root of that. So 1.3, uh, we'll just go round this to 7, 1.37. Okay. Now, what is that and we can do this and, and basically if, if we were to have access right now to math excel um you would see questions like this they ask you find the mean find the variance find the standard deviation and you type those in you go to the next question but what i want us to think about is how we can interpret this okay what does this mean to us if if we know anything about our distribution it's going to allow us to make more concrete uh conclusions uh but Right now, I don't know, and we'll, we'll graph this here in a moment, but I don't know if our data, our distribution is symmetric or if it's, well, that's terrible. If it's skewed, that would be skewed to the right, correct? Or if it's skewed to the left, okay? Or it could, I mean, it could be maybe something that's exponential, either direction, okay? So we just don't know, right? So if we don't know the distribution, whether it be a symmetric or skewed, uh, we usually revert to Chebyshev's theorem, okay? Uh, if we do know that it's symmetric, then we can use the empirical uh, rule. But what either of those talk about is taking your mean and adding two standard deviations to it, and then taking your mean and subtracting two standard deviations from it. If I add two standard deviations, so um, multiply that by two, and then add my mean to it, so this will give me 5.23861, when I take that number and add two of those to it. Does that make sense? If I take that number of 2.5, my mean, and subtract two standard deviations. It gives me negative 0.23061. And basically what this tells me then, if my data is symmetric, if my data is symmetric, then it, with 95% um, of the time, so with, with what we would say usual results, things that we could expect to come back to us on an individual basis, we would it would make sense that we could see um, people that guessed on this quiz to get anywhere between negative 0.2 and 5.2 questions correct. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, obviously, you can't get negative answers correct, right? Or negative questions correct. You can't get like 0.2 if it's multiple choice. Um, but essentially what we would argue here is that zero to like five um, would be usual values to get correct on that quiz by guessing, okay? Does that make sense everybody? Um, 
That would happen 95% of the time. Okay, 95% of our data falls between two standard deviations of the mean. If we were using Chebyshev's theorem, this 95 would go to 75. Okay, and 75% of our data uh, we could expect to fall between those two things. Okay, and that's that's what I think you miss out on, like a math Excel, and they ask you to, and even a lot of textbooks, uh, they ask you to do the calculations, but then they don't they don't do anything further than that. Okay, where I think it's important for us to be able to interpret this. Um, the nice thing about um, Excel is that it, it has in Google Sheets, I think Google Sheets is a little bit better for some of this stuff. I think Google Sheets is better for um, uh, using charts. They have a better, it's just more user friendly for their charts. Uh, but we'll try the same thing here on Excel. If I have a binomial distribution, I know that this is a binomial distribution. We have the information necessary uh, to calculate. So I go binomial, uh, so binome distribution, D-I-S-T. All right, now it's gonna ask me a couple things. I believe the first thing, uh, what does that say up there, Peyton? I can't read from back here. Number S. Number S, okay. So number S uh, is going to be the number of successes that we're interested in here. Okay. And right now, I'm just going to try to find out what, what this is going to do is find the probability for me, the probability of zero successes. So basically, the idea is, what is the probability that you go through this exam or this quiz and you answer C on all of them? What is the probability that you get a 0% on that? Does that make sense? You get none of them right. Okay. Uh, the next number it's asking for, is it say trials? Okay, so we know it's out of 10 questions. Okay. Uh, and then the next one says uh, probability of S. So that's the probability of a success. So probability of a success was 0.25. And then the next criteria uh, says cumulative. Okay, well, I don't want cumulative. I want um, just that independent trial of zero. Okay, so I'm going to actually type in false here to do this. Uh, basically, if I wrote true um, and asked for cumulative, then when I get down here to one, it would take the probability of one and probability of zero and add them together. If I got to two, it would take the probability of two, one, and zero and add them together. And I don't want that. I want the individual probability. So what we're seeing here is that there would be a 5% chance, 5.6% chance that when you take this quiz blindly by just answering randomly, you're going to get a 5% chance that you get none of them right. Okay. Now if I drag this, Okay, um, see if we can format these a little bit. Does one of these say, I can't see, I'm blind. Number. No, not yet. All right, so five percent. Here would be so the probability that you get one. You do this, you get one question right. There's an eighteen percent chance. You get two questions right. There's twenty eight percent chance. And if you remember, our mean was two point five, right? So hopefully it makes sense to you that if our mean is two point five, then that's why a bulk of our data is around the mean, right? Okay, there's over fifty percent. Um, of our um, probabilities here that are going to happen between two and three. Um, think about this, okay, this would be, now move the decimal two places to the right and that's your percentage for getting 100% on that quiz by just guessing. Pretty rare that that's gonna happen, right? Okay, um, if we take this and create a chart Okay, so we've got our chart here with um, the probabilities on the left-hand side and then the number of questions you got right. Uh, you see that this thing would actually be skewed to the right, correct? Okay, um, so this would be more applicable to being using Chebyshev's theorem 
instead of the empiric world because this is not symmetric. But 75% of our data is going to fall between that negative 0.2 number that I gave uh, and 5. Does that make sense to everybody? Would you guys agree that most of your data, and Chevy Chev says at least 75%, so it could be greater than that, but at least 75% of your people that take this quiz and do this in the long term, over and over and over again, because remember, we're doing this for, these are mu and sigma and sigma squared, so those are parameters, so we're doing this for a population. Um, over and over and over again, a bulk of your results are gonna fall between essentially zero and five. Okay. It'd be real, really unusual or rare to get values out here. And that's the purpose of being able to um, identify these standard deviations and means for this per particular type of question. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, we got three minutes, so we'll stop there. Um, on Monday, my goal is to go over uh, at least one more of these next three with you. And then we'll get into this formula here. So this formula right here is exactly what the Excel command was doing for us to find those probabilities. Okay. Um, Pardon the interruption. Student Council just wanted to congratulate and.